from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A San Antonio convenience store clerk shot and killed up next. Why we still don't know when the man accused of killing him will go to trial. A man armed with four handguns killing two people outside a high school graduation ceremony in Richmond, Virginia. Up next, what investigators are saying about the 19-year-old suspect and the charges he's facing. All right, well, back here at home, taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 70 degrees to start your Wednesday morning. We're going to check in with Mike for your full forecast in just a few moments. Good morning. It is Wednesday. It is June 7th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. i got to say, walking outside, I don't know if it was just me, the humidity hit like a bus. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a little, it was a little much, <laughs> but you know, for early in the morning, but still not as bad as it could be. Let's check in with yeah, Mike. Yeah. Exactly. And also here in town, we've got a lot of clear skies, which you can see on live cam right now. However, hill country, different situation. We've had a cluster of storms develop in the past uh, few hours. So if you could look even further off to the, uh, the Northwest right here on uh, authority radar, as you can see those showers, those thunderstorms, they did radar estimates as this moved through through Western Kerr County earlier this morning dumped about two inches of rain. There was a flood advisory for parts of Western Kerr County earlier this morning. And as you can see, these continue to work their way down to the southeast, going right through Bandera and heading in toward maybe uh, Medina Lake area, but pretty much paralleling I-10 coming right down there through Bandera and then even more of these have been developing a little bit further off to the northwest. Now there's no hail with those, although maybe a little bit of say pea sized hail would be possible. This is dumping rain at the rate of four inches per hour. That doesn't mean you'll get that much rain, but these things don't really have wheels on them. They're only moving 10, 15, maybe close to 20 miles per hour. So it's not a real good clip. So you are getting some pretty hefty downpours with those. So we'll continue to watch these and uh, see if they do indeed decide to hold together and come down here into Bear County. I think some of the indications are right now that we will see some of this rain this morning. Mid 60s in the hill country, 70 here in town, still slightly below normal. Yeah, there's enough humidity out there. It's not a wet towel, but enough to greet you as you step outside this morning. And the allergens mold finally came down from the previous day's reading, which was way almost off the charts. Throughout the rest of this morning, we'll take into account some of those showers and thunderstorms in the hill country. Those will die down. We get that lull. And then, like yesterday, just a few. There weren't a whole lot out of there, out there, but we did see some of those showers and thunderstorms. That's going to be the case later on with a high temperature today up to 90. What's in store for the weekend? Are we still looking at blisteringly hot temperatures? Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Max. Thank you, Mike. Today marks seven years since the San Antonio convenience store clerk was shot and killed. And this morning, we still don't know when the man accused of killing him will go on trial. Our Sarah Costa is here to give us an update on the case. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. And the victim was 23-year-old Zachary Benavides, a suspect, DeAnthony Carter. The investigators say Carter and another suspect robbed and killed Benavides at the Diamond Food Mart on Vance Jackson in June of 2016. The other suspect took a plea deal, but Carter's case has been delayed many times. About seven of his defense attorneys have withdrawn from the case. But Carter's current attorney says he's eager for his client to have his day in court. I do believe that um, it's time for my client to get justice. It's been seven years and we're looking forward to uh, a, a setting for trial. The death penalty is not on the table for this case. So if Carter's convicted, he would automatically be sentenced to life in prison without parole. Max and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. None of that mass shooting causing chaos at a high school graduation in Virginia. Police overnight described the deadly violence as a targeted attack. And as ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, witnesses have reported dozens of gunshots in rapid succession. This morning, a Virginia community in shock after a mass shooting brought chaos to a high school graduation. At least seven people were shot outside a Richmond theater where graduates and their families were leaving the ceremony. Probably at least like 30 shots total. I saw the ambulance pull away several people off of the ground. Police say two people are dead. A family member telling ABC News they were father and son, 18-year-old Sean Jackson and his father, Renzo Smith, there to celebrate his son's graduation. Jackson's younger sister was hit by a fleeing car and is recovering. 
This image shows students in caps and gowns running from the scene. They just like continuously fired and continuously fired and everyone started running for their lives. A 19-year-old suspect is now in custody, expected to face second-degree murder charges. Police saying they believe this was a targeted attack. We think the, the suspect knew at least one of the victims. The superintendent, still in the robe he wore for the ceremony, emotional. Tired of seeing people get shot, our kids get shot, and I beg of the entire community to stop. A child should be able to go to their graduation and walk out their graduation and enjoy the accomplishment with their friends and their families. It's nothing sacred any longer. Five other people were injured in the aftermath. Officials say multiple handguns were found at the scene. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. Hazy and dangerous fumes from ongoing Canadian wildfires engulfing the skies over most of the Northeast. Take a look. The smoke prompting serious air quality alerts for millions of Americans, at least 17 states issuing those alerts. This thick fumes really blocking the sky, sending people indoors, avoiding breathing in the polluted air. Canadian officials say firefighters are scrambling to put out these blazes in Quebec, where more than 160 forest fires are still active. The fires are fueled by high temperatures and dry conditions. The Supreme Court agreed to hear a trademark dispute over the phrase Trump too small. The phrase comes from an exchange between Trump and Republican Senator Marco Rubio during a 2016 presidential primary debate. California attorney Steve Elster said he wanted to use the phrase as a part of a political commentary targeting former President Donald Trump. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office refused registration, saying the former president would have to give consent for the name Trump to be used. An appeals court ruled the refusal violated the First Amendment. The case will be heard next term. Well, it's a controversial merger that's really shaking up the sports world. The PGA Tour combining forces with Saudi Arabia-funded Live Golf. That means that the Saudi government will now have a major stake in a major American sport. It's an about face after a years long rivalry. Now, Liv has paid top dollar to poach some of the biggest names from the PGA. The reaction was swift. Golfers say they were blindsided and a group representing families of the 9-11 attack victims say they're shocked and frankly offended, accusing the PGA of hypocrisy. Time now, 437, 70 degrees. Up next, we're going to take you inside the mandatory minicamp for the Dallas Cowboys at the Star in Frisco. It is never too early to talk football, or people are out and about this morning. Take a look at those roads. All right, so it is 437 this morning. we got about 17 cars on the road. Stephen Cavazos is going to have your full update throughout the morning. If anything does pop up, we'll let you know. And let's look out there with live cam. We're at 70 degrees, a little humid out there, and some places are getting rain this morning. We're going to check in with Mike for all the details a little later on. Football coverage powered by Davis Law. Good morning and welcome back. The Cowboys kicking off mandatory mini camp yesterday at the Star in Frisco. Take a look. Three days of training. Tyron Smith playing left tackle, meaning Tyler Smith back at left guard. Last season as a rookie, Tyler mainly played left tackle. Remember, Tyron got hurt. Tyler says playing guard, no big deal. I mean, it's definitely like riding a bike. Like, you know, you just, it's like the mountain bikes where you gotta switch gears sometimes, you know. So just staying sharp on the footwork is like the biggest thing. You know, at guard, it's a little bit more of a phone booth. You know, you gotta have quicker hands, tackle, it's more space. You gotta be quicker with your feet. So just like refining those little details again. I love the mountain bike analogy. I think it works perfectly. All right, out in Houston, the Texans wrapping up another set of organized team activities. All eyes, of course, on rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud from Ohio State, the Ohio State University. First year head coach, D'Amico Ryans, clearly pleased with how the rooks are coming along. The rookies, they're all as a group, they're doing well. I think you start with, you know, the, top, the two guys that we drafted first, you know, C.J. and Will. Those guys have done a, an excellent job with what they've been tasked. They've been getting better. I'm excited to see their growth. Ball to baseball missions back at the wall for a six game series against Wichita starts off on a good note last night. Mitchens beating the win search six to five thanks to a walk off bases a loaded double. You gotta love walk offs. I still need to make it to a missions game and an I SAFC game. No, well, the summer is a perfect time. Summer is a perfect. I love 
Shout out because I love the SAFC jerseys. Yeah. Big well, fan. Well, there you go. All right. Time now, 442, 69 degrees. A rare and mysterious illness affecting marijuana users just ahead. Who doctors say is most vulnerable to getting it? And with Father's Day right around the corner. Oh, my goodness. Why would you show a steak this early in the morning? I'm already starving. A tasty steak may be the best option for a gift. Up next, the company that delivers the best in appearance, aroma, and flavor. And welcome back. It's 445. Doctors are seeing an increase in a rare illness that some people develop after consuming cannabis products over a long period of time. ABC's Juju Chang has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's a rare, mysterious illness affecting marijuana users. They tested me for everything else underneath the sun. When Erica Hagler was 33, the otherwise healthy Massachusetts artist was struck down with severe symptoms. I felt like I was going to die. Shakes, elevated heart rate, completely dehydrated, and the vomiting was back to back to back. She says her eventual diagnosis was CHS, or cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, which affects people who use high doses of marijuana daily over an extended period of time. It comes in a cyclical fashion. They're terrifically symptomatic and they can get very, very sick. So how common is CHS and who's most vulnerable? We'll have what you need to know coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Juju Chang, ABC News. All right, well, if you're looking for a Father's Day gift that sizzles or you just appreciate a great steak, look no further than your front door. Mail order companies deliver beef in a box in 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz tells us which ones are a cut above the rest. You can almost taste it. These folks did. The filet was the best steak I've ever had. I don't know which was which, but it was all great. Consumer Reports taste testers sampled popular filet mignon and ribeye cuts from Omaha Steaks, the Kansas City Steak Company, and Snake River Farms. The companies didn't know that we were testing these steaks. They didn't send them to us. We bought them just as any consumer would. The panel looked at everything from packaging to the steak's appearance, aroma, flavor, and texture. Snake River Farms Arms was voted editor's choice. The filet mignon was everyone's favorite, and the cowboy steak was a stunner that would make any meat lover happy. These filets didn't come cheap, though, at $8.50 an ounce, and the 40-ounce ribeye cost $158, or $3.95 an ounce. Voted best for a crowd, the Kansas City State Company's filet. It's $5.83 an ounce. The 18-ounce ribeye was about 70 bucks, or $3.96 an ounce. Most tasters like this ribeye the best, even if it wasn't the prettiest. Omaha Steaks was voted the best value. Neither the filet or the ribeye were anyone's favorites in the taste test, but we really appreciated how beautifully butchered and well-marbled the steaks were. Omaha was the least expensive of the three. Its filet was $4.76 an ounce and the ribeye $3.54 an ounce. Testers compared Omaha steaks to a really good supermarket steak, a fine option and especially good value. All of the steaks arrive frozen and packed in dry ice so you can grill them whenever you have a hankering for a juicy steak. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick check of the roads with Transguy looking over at I-35 at Maine. Things are moving and we didn't see any problems on the roadways a little earlier, but we will be checking in with Stephen Cavazos next half hour. I want to go back to the state because my mouth is now watering. <laughs> That's not because I'm, I'm I mean, just the, the prices were a lot higher than I expected. Yeah. Well, and that's for buying at home. I mean, right, like right. prices. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go to H E B. <laughs> if you go, <laughs> that's grab, a good, good choice. Grab one for both of us. I so. got you. Anyway, hey, uh, dry roads right now here in town, no problems. But if you're heading out I-10, you may run into some uh, showers and a few storms. Now, some folks, not many, got some more rain yesterday. Another uh, what? Just shy of a half an inch of rain. One mile east of 35 on 1518. All right, a little lawn watering there. I got a little lawn watering myself. We have some more out in portions of the hill country as of right now, and we've been watching this cluster of storms, which has been working its way uh, from northwest to southeast. And this cluster right here was out there in northwestern uh, Kerr County, and that did produce a uh, Radar estimates anywhere from inch and a half to two inches of rain. There was a flood advisory for Western Kerr County earlier this morning, and these are continuing. Now you can see to another one is developing out there to the northwest. They are moving at a not a really, really 
fast clip and so that's why you're seeing some uh, pretty hefty rain and at last check anywhere from say 10 to 15 miles per hour or so but uh, right around in there and so therefore as far as that rate and again they're not moving all that quickly so they are moving down to the southeast and that particular storm is going to be around Pipe Creek just about uh, five o'clock this morning and then in further off to the northwest we've got this cell right here this is the one it's not producing any hail at last check obviously some uh, pretty good lightning strikes in there and this also is working its way down to the uh, southeast at uh, roughly 15 miles per hour. So at that clip uh, right around time, more about 556. So it's out in very sparsely populated areas, but it is also looking like these storms as they continue their movement down to the uh, southeast will be holding together and we're seeing so somewhat of a uh, training effect as well with a couple of more of these, you know, trying to develop out there up around junction and continue their movement down to the southeast. So right around Medina Lake, you're going to be getting some of this rain. It looks like they're in Bernie and in northwestern Bear County as the morning rolls on. Here's what it looks like right now. Very clear skies out there, but we may see some flashes of lightning off there to the northwest. Also a hint of fog here and there. So I've got that 30% chance for some of those showers and storms in the hill country this morning. Otherwise, we're going to have a lot of sunshine midday. Then we start to see another chance for a few showers and thunderstorms around here also got an ozone action day in effect for today. Now, as far as computer models, we've got some of these storms right there. They die down this morning and then we'll see a couple of more popping up later on this afternoon. Also, what we're going to have to watch out for is maybe a cluster of storms developing out to the west tonight, and then we're going to have to watch out for the same thing tomorrow night. So not only this afternoon, but there wants to be some of those nighttime storm complexes tonight as well as tomorrow night. We'll keep an eye out for that. After that, looks like we're pretty much going to shut off the uh, rain faucet and turn things up mid 90s over the weekend, Friday through the weekend, and then we're going to continue into the mid and upper 90s next week. And that means there's going to be some folks that are seeing triple digits next week, especially along the Rio Grande Valley. It is crazy how it, the switch just flips. Yeah. yeah. Now there's a indication a week from now, a little bit of a break okay. in that heat. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. Well, so, maybe we'll, you know. Yeah, a little bit of hope. It'll, we'll be spoiled again, maybe. Oh, <laughs> Steph with the silver lining. Thank you, Mike. 452, 69 degrees out. Up next, a first look at actor Mark Hamill in a new action comedy that's a lot different from his role in Star Wars. There's Luke. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Top tier, we're gonna go pick three, five, six, zero, fireball six. Daily four, three, one, three, four, fireball one. Cash five, 16, 17, 25, 26, 35. And your mega millions, six, 12, 23, 29, 57, mega ball four, mega plier two. Good luck. Welcome back, a world renowned singer passing away, plus Mark Hamill starring in a new action comedy. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The singer behind one of the most instantly recognizable songs in the world has died. That's Astrid Gilberto's voice you hear on The Girl from Ipanema, the first song she ever recorded, and not bad for her first song. It would go on to win the Grammy for Record of the Year in 1965, sell more than a million copies, and it's reportedly the second most covered song of all time, behind Yesterday by the Beatles. She went on to a long career in music. Astrid Gilberto died Monday at the age of 83. When I was 22, I got involved with the Russian Mafia. Burt Kreischer had a lot of fun taking national treasure Mark Hamill and flipping his nice guy persona upside down in his new movie, The Machine. Hamill plays Kreischer's cranky dad in the action comedy. There's a lot of cursing and some drug use. And Kreischer tells me it was a treat to be able to sit at Hamill's feet on set and listen to Star Wars stories. I was fascinated when I found out that uh, Harrison Ford wasn't originally supposed to play Han Solo. He was just doing line reads of people. And I was like, tell me more gossip. I love the gossip. And he, he is generous, man. The Machine is out now in theaters. Dave Grohl thanking fans for being there for the band as Foo Fighters started up their first tour since the death of drummer Taylor Hawkins last year. On Instagram, Grohl posted a pic of a handwritten note writing, it feels good to see the fans and sing and scream and cry together. I'm really sorry. 
I didn't think it would end up like this. And the star and creator of HBO's Barry has a birthday today. Actor and comedian Bill Hader is 45. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. Love Dave Grohl. Love the Foo Fighters. You brought up a great point. They're going to be at ACL. Yep, yep, uh, in October. All right, are you headed there? I, I am. <laughs> Good for you. Yes. Heck yeah. All right, time now, 457, 69 degrees. Republicans continue to add to their ranks for the 2024 race for the White House. Just ahead on GMSA, why former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie is already taking shots at former President Trump. Plus, wine attack that led to a deadly shooting this weekend in San Antonio, now raising a lot of questions about the man who was killed. And let's look at the roads with Trans Guy looking over at Highway 281 at Loop 410. Things look good there. Stephen Cavazos is in the studio. We're going to check with him after the break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Chris Christie is coming out swinging as he launches his campaign for president. I'm Lindsay Watts in Washington. His message to former President Trump straight ahead. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, some people in our viewing area seeing rain this morning. We're going to check in with Mike for your full forecast and how warm it's going to get. It is June. And so it's starting to feel that way. Good morning. It is June 7th. Thank you so much for starting your Wednesday with us. So did you make it out and about yesterday? I did. And it was funny because I always listened closely to Mike and he was talking about the rain chances. So when I was at my little girl's basketball camp, everybody was shocked to see the rain outside. I'm like, oh, yeah, there was a chance of rain. I knew because of Mike Oster. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'm glad you look. Thank you very much for that. And, you know, in the big picture things yesterday, Hardly any rain as we were talking about, but it just happened to fall right here where a lot of folks live here in San Antonio. And uh, that's going to be the situation potentially today where it's going to be very limited. But if you get one or two of these showers right over town, yeah, it's going to be a wet afternoon. 69 degrees right now out there at the airport. Dew points at 66, so not bad as far as humidity relative to the temperature. 90% humidity and uh, we're going to make it up to 90 later on today. Now again, that's cloud cover dependent. You get one of those storms to park over the airport, you won't hit 90. Other folks will, obviously. The aquifer yesterday, mm, decent hit down half a foot, and the allergens, mold really came down from the previous day's reading when it was up in 11,000, almost 12,000. It was 840 yesterday in low amount of grass. All right, look at radar right now, and we're watching this cluster of showers and thunderstorms out there in parts of the hill country. Now, as these continue to work their way down to the uh, southeast, it almost appears that the first round right here is sort of dying off just a, a little bit as these continue right down here just along the uh, Kamau County and uh, excuse me, uh, Kendall County and uh, Bandera County line. No lightning strikes are being detected right there. Now go further off to the northwest and we still have this cluster of storms that is, these are sort of uh, getting born up there around Junction and then coming down into Kerr County. These are still packing a fairly decent punch, so we'll continue to watch these. Now, some of these do have a history of producing some pretty hefty downpours. Radar estimates earlier this morning in western uh, Kerr County were anywhere from an inch and a half to two inches of rain. They're not moving along that fast, so heavy downpours, yeah, it's, it's coming down pretty good. So we will continue to watch these. Like I said, right now it does appear as though it's starting to fizzle a little bit, but just watch it along 10 and then obviously heading out 16 in toward Bandera. Also, ozone action day in effect today goes into effect later on for the metro metropolitan area up in toward Austin. So we've got some of those showers up in the northwest this morning. Then later on today, a couple of stray showers, a couple of stray thunderstorms. Most of us won't see rain, but if you do, a decent downpour, low 90s. And then we're going to have to watch out for some nighttime storm clusters to develop in the hill country. And that's going to be today and tomorrow. Same scenario in both situations. And then we get into the weekend. It is going to be hot, mid 90s, although normal high temperatures, low 90s, so not that much above normal. But then next week, it gets even hotter. Yeah, we're looking at upper 90s, and a lot of folks may be chalking up their first triple-digit readings next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. Anything going on yet? Well, you're a little busy bee over there, Mike. Uh, thankfully, things are pretty quiet in my department. If you are headed out to the airport, 281 at 410, a pretty quiet shot for you this morning. Yesterday and the day before, we actually had a lot of issues out on the roadway. Thankfully, we're starting our Wednesday morning commute off with some quiet roadways. So as you can see right behind me, not a lot of folks out there this morning. Perfect time to maybe grab some tranquility 
already out on the roadways. Giving you a wide look at our map, uh, again, you're not seeing a lot of problems out there. We didn't get a chance to talk about construction yesterday. There's a lot of it, as you can see, scattered in and around town. So we'll get to that a little bit later on, but I've not spotted any major issues. Roads also appear to be dry, at least here in town. We'll keep a close eye on things throughout the morning, but if you're traveling in this early from any of these communities, take your time. Right now, we are seeing a pleasant drive from Pleasanton along 37 northbound. It looks like it'll be about 31 minutes at this hour. 30 minutes along US 90 eastbound if you're traveling in from Castroville. And that arrival from Lionel along I-35 northbound should take you about 17 minutes. But back here at things are quiet right there at 281 at the airport. Uh, again, I will keep a close eye on things and have an update on other road closures coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Max. Steven. New this morning, San Antonio police say a person was hit and killed overnight by a train. So this was the scene. It happened near I-35 and Thousand Oaks. This is the northeast side. Police say the person was sitting on the train tracks when the train was going through the area. Right now, Union Pacific officials, they're investigating, trying to figure out what exactly happened. An attack that led to a deadly shooting Saturday is now raising questions about the man who was killed. A Bear County Sheriff's deputy shot and killed Ryan Stanish after the sheriff says Stanish attacked that deputy and his own family. Now, Saturday's shooting in the 800 block of Versant Bluff comes almost five years after Stanis was convicted of killing his girlfriend, Dorinda Ma. Now, in December 2018, Dorinda was pronounced dead shortly after being taken to the hospital with severe injuries caused by her then boyfriend, Ryan Stanish. Stanish eventually pleaded no contest to a manslaughter charge and was sentenced to 10 years community supervision. Dorinda's family says the special prosecutor on her case did not feel they had enough evidence to convict Stanish on a murder charge, so the charge was reduced to manslaughter. For years, our family didn't feel like it was justified at all. If, if the incident with Dorinda, if the outcome was different, you know, I think if they would have put him away then, this would have happened. And our case that investigates team did dig into those records. They found Stanish had violated his community supervision multiple times. The special prosecutor filed several motions to revoke his probation and change ad adjudication in Dorinda's death to guilty as recently as May 19th. Now we have that full investigation on our website at kset.com. Not of the special session at the Texas legislature. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick is challenging the property tax plan passed by the House, and our Sarah Costa joins us now to show us what's happened so far. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Okay, stay with me. This can get a little convoluted, but it's super important because this will impact Texans' tax dollars. So the Senate and the House are at odds over how to spend $12.3 billion earmarked for property tax cuts. The House passed legislation that aligns with the governor's wishes last week. So let's take a look. According to the Texas Tribune, Governor Abbott wants that $12 billion in tax cuts to be shared among both home and commercial, commercial property owners. He does not want legislation that includes a homestead exemption. In spite of those instructions, the Senate unanimously passed its own plan last week that spreads 70% of the money among all property owners, then puts the rest of it toward a bump in the homestead exemption, which would lower the amount of a home's value that can be taxed to pay for public schools and cut homeowners' tax bills. The current homestead exemption on school taxes is $40,000. Patrick wants to raise it to $100,000. Both plans would save landowners money on property taxes. The Senate plan offers more relief to people who own their primary residence than the House plan does. The House helps businesses and higher income property owners more than the Senate plan does. OK, so time is more of an issue with the Senate plan. Homestead exemptions are protected by the Texas Constitution, so their proposal will need to go to voters in November for it, be, for it to become law for the next tax year. And therefore, it needs to be passed with enough time to get onto that ballot. On Tuesday, the Senate sent strong signals that neither the House bills will go anywhere as long as the House was away. Now, the House passed its bills and adjourned for the special session. That leaves the Senate to either pass the bills or call it a day on sending legislation to the governor. The, the governor declined to answer whether he would accept a compromise with the Senate. However, the governor has said he could call another special session. Max, Steph. Thank you, Spivey. This morning, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, former New Jersey governor, officially entering the presidential race. He is launching his campaign with a fierce attack on Donald Trump. And meanwhile, ABC's Lindsay Watts reports that Chris Christie says he's in the race to win, but is still considered a long shot candidate. 
Chris Christie is coming out of the gate swinging. The reason I'm going after Trump is twofold. One, he deserves it. And two, it's the way to win. While other Republicans vying for the White House have mostly avoided mentioning the former president, Christie said Trump's name more than 40 times as he launched his campaign at a town hall in New Hampshire. The person I am talking about who is obsessed with the mirror, who never admits a mistake, who never admits a fault, and who always finds someone else and something else to blame for whatever goes wrong, but finds every reason to take credit for anything that goes right is Donald Trump. Trump responded on social media, saying Christie's speech was hard to watch and boring, calling him a failed governor. Christie is a former Trump advisor who also ran for president in 2016. Polling by 538 shows he hasn't exceeded more than 3% in a single primary poll this year. I hear Chris Christie's coming in. Former Vice President Mike Pence is also launching his campaign for president today in Iowa. He filed paperwork on Monday, making him the first VP in modern history to take on his former running mate. The GOP primary will get even more crowded later today when North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum announces his campaign. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. Time now, 5'11", 69 degrees. And can you believe that the iPhone's autocorrect problem finally gets fixed? Up next, how Apple's making sure your phone actually types what you mean. Plus, next, we're going to tell you about the status of some dogs that have turned aggressive in some west side neighborhoods. And if they're close to being caught by animal care services. And let's look out there with live cam. It's quite humid out there. We're starting at 69 degrees. We may see a shower, but for sure, we'll be hitting the temperatures higher today. We're going to be checking in with Mike for all those details coming up. Welcome back. It's been more than two weeks since these dogs were dumped on a far west side neighborhood. And neighbors say they have yet to be caught and that now the dogs are attacking and killing cats in the Timber Ridge and Terra communities. Video shows the dogs being dumped on May 19th and since then numerous calls have been made to Animal Care Services. They told us on May 26th that a trap would be set for the dogs, but that didn't happen until Monday night. This specific one, it was just we, we had traps longer at some location. You know, it, it does usually happen like that. We think there's probably about 13 that are good to go, that are not damaged. ACS Field Operations says there's also a trap on Fabian Street where at least five calls have been made for aggressive dogs since Saturday. But at last check, ACS has not captured either dog. ACS says anyone who needs an immediate response should call San Antonio Police. Time now, 5.15, 69 degrees. Instagram is developing its own AI chatbot. Oh. Up next, we're going to tell you how it will better your experience and when you could see it online. Apple also incorporating AI in texting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so plus, you know, the $3,500 <laughs> VR glasses. All right, taking a live look out there. Oh, sir, people starting to hit the road. Steven Cavazos in the building. We're going to check in with him in just a few moments. Your record label is taking off but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit indeed.com slash hire. If you've had thyroid eye disease for years, and your bloodshot eyes have you seen red, it's not too late for another treatment option. To learn more, visit treated.com. That's treat, T-E-D.com. Okay, everyone, our mission is complete balanced nutrition. Together, we provide nutrients to support immune, muscle, bone, and heart health. Insure with 25 vitamins and minerals. Enter the $10,000 Nourishing Moments giveaway. And we're down, we go. Joe, Eau de Toilette, and the new Eau de Parfum, Giorgio Armani. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. Bye. Good, good morning. Welcome back. This is so, so I got to say, on Wednesdays, we wear pink. I guess Mike didn't get the memo. Uh, well, I mean, I have a lot of pockets. For <laughs> <laughs> Here, Mike, you can hold my... My bag. Oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> we have to accessorize here. Actually, it matches my shoes, so that's good. So. That's uh, perfect. <laughs> he looked. <laughs> I'm not getting it. That's great. Great color. Traffic or weather? 
Uh, it's you. It's up to you guys. <laughs> okay, let's do weather. Anyway, oh, okay. Uh, traffic. Oh, traffic. Oh, traffic. Traffic. See, I, like, I didn't know we had a call. Yeah. Well, I, got, I got thrown off uh, with the let's traffic. I promise I'll keep it quick because there's not a lot going on over here, Mike. Let's take a look around town. You can see that uh, not a lot is happening, as I mentioned. Not as busy as Mike this morning, but 37 at Southeast Military. Things are moving along just fine. Roads appear to be dry here in town. But let's show you our map because we do have a lot of construction to talk about, as you can see, in and around the Alamo City. We're going to get to one of those spots right now. You can see I-10 in Kendall County. County. We have painting work. Remember, I mentioned this is on Monday. It's going to take us all the way up into the end of the work week. That work starts at 9 in the morning, and we should see it wrap at 3 in the afternoon. Single lane closures on the frontage roads in both directions from State Highway 46 to US 87. But head over to KSAT.com slash traffic for a full list of all the closures taking place right now. As you can see, things are quiet, Mike. Roads appear to be dry right now here in town, but I know other places are experiencing some... Uh yeah, we've got some rain out in portions of the hill country. Now this is from yesterday and beautiful view of that rain shaft right there. And again, these were very, very the big picture of things, even though it was like right in downtown big picture of things. There was not a lot of rain out there yesterday. That's going to be the situation again today, and that's the situation this morning. So we are watching these showers, but as you can see, as time has rolled on, they are definitely kind of fizzling a little bit. Still a few around Medina Lake right there and maybe grazed by burning. Now we will continue to see some of these work their way in toward before they die down in toward Helotus, in toward Leon Springs, just a couple of these showers. So just watch out for, especially on 16, if you're heading out in toward Bandera County, you're going to run into a little bit of this rain. And then there's another cell in behind. So some of these cells are trying to pop up almost like a little bit of a training effect right here, just to the uh, northeast of Medina, continuing to work its way down to the, the southeast. And they're not moving along at a really fast clip, uh, say 15 miles per hour, maybe close to 20 miles per hour. This cell out here in just northwestern uh, Kirk County, as you can see, that does have uh, some decent downpours associated with it. Not anything just off the charts, but rainfall rates right now with that uh, storm. Now, earlier this morning, we were seeing four or five inch rainfall rates and some of the heaviest right there, about um, two and a third inches per hour. That does not mean you'll get that much rain. It's just saying that if indeed you were it, it's coming down pretty good. If that were to sit in one spot, yes, you would see a lot of very heavy rain, a couple of inches of rain, but it is moving along and it almost appears as though this is starting to take a little more of an eastward movement going in toward Gillespie County. So just these few uh, showers out here in portions of the hill country. We'll keep an eye on that little spot moving into northwestern Bear County. So we're not seeing anything looking off to the northwest by the airport as of yet. Hints of fog here and there. There. We just have to watch out for that throughout the rest of the morning. There's that chance for a couple of showers this morning. Otherwise, lots of sunshine. Then once we get in toward the afternoon hours, we will see a few more clouds around here. A couple of showers, a couple of uh, thunderstorms, one or two of them, 90 for a high temperature today. And that's what the computer models indicate that cell out there sort of dying off. And then as we go into the afternoon, a couple of more are going to be popping up around here. Again, very few and far between. What we're also going to watch out for is perhaps a couple of uh, stronger storms out to the west later on tonight. As a matter of fact, Storm Prediction Center does have a, a small chance for some of those way out to the west around Val Verde County to be strong, potentially severe. Now tomorrow, about the same situation. We'll also have to watch out for some of those clusters of storms tomorrow night. Some of those could be on the strong to uh, severe side. And then rain chances pretty much out the window and hot this weekend, mid 90s, mid upper 90s next week. Wow. Well, at least we have some time to build up to it. We'll, we'll prepare for the heat. I don't know if I can prepare. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. just, uh, my buddy was texting me, and it was just funny how it just, it flips a switch, but it also sneaks up on you so quickly. Yeah. Yes. Well, and plus with the below normal temperatures that we've had for such a long time, which yeah. has been a nice treat. Very nice. Because you know? like today and tomorrow, we're not quite up to mm -hmm. the average Still not this time that of bad. year even. Right. Yep. Well, here we come. Happy June. Time now, 524, 69 degrees. Up next, if you're a fan of The Queen's Gambit, we're going to show you a new chess video game oh. that ties into the hit Netflix show. In today's Tech Bytes, Instagram may soon have its own AI chatbot. Online tech reports say testing is underway for the new feature, allowing users to get answers and advice from the chatbot in their direct messages. The chatbot will reportedly have 30 different personalities to choose from. 
Apple's autocorrect is getting an upgrade. The new operating system will learn from your habits, fixing words that are frequently misspelled and leaving those that are intentionally included. And the feature will use AI to predict your next word. And a Queen's Gabbit chess video game is coming to Netflix next month. The game is based on the streaming series of the same name. Netflix describes the game as an immersive trip through character Beth Harmon's world. It's one of several Netflix games coming this summer. And those are your Tech Bites. Have a great Wednesday, everyone. All right, there you go. Time now, 527, 69 degrees. A recalled infant pillow is still causing the deaths of babies. And up next, a warning about buying and selling the product online that could get you in legal trouble. And remember that olive oil coffee that was introduced by Starbucks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Well, it is now available here in Texas. Hmm. We're going to take a drive. We're going to tell you where you can try it in just a bit. And ahead on GMSA at 6, we hear the phrase, timing is everything. A lot, but it turns out there is actual science behind good timing. We're going to explain coming up. Making headlines this morning, the United States hitting a record high, nearly 49,000 gun deaths. My grandchildren's mother was shot and killed with her nine-year-old son standing next to her. After every shooting, we hear on Twitter that, that lawmakers and, 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 and uh, citizens call for action, but, but there's no action taken. Just ahead, how protesters hope a sit-in at the U.S. Capitol will change things in Washington, D.C. And let's look out there with live cam this Wednesday morning. We're starting at 69 degrees. Not too bad out there, a little humid. But things are expected to heat up this afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So, so far, no one on the road has to deal with conditions here. Right. Uh, yeah. Here in town, roads are dry. At my yeah, we've weird. got a couple of showers in the hill country and they appear to be fizzling out. Some may hold together and come into the northwest part of Bear County. Show you that in just a second. First of all, looking out there, by 410 at the airport, not bad. Should have a fantastic sunrise this morning. And the temperature right now stands at 69. So we're still three degrees below normal. We've been enjoying these below normal temperatures. Dew points at 66, which, yeah, there's humidity out there. Uh, it's not like a wet towel, but with that relatively high humidity and those numbers close together, light wind. We've got to watch out for a couple of patches of fog. This is what we were talking about as far as a couple of showers here. We've been watching these. These were some thunderstorm clusters moved through uh, from uh, out there around Junction in toward northwestern Kerr County. Did dump some pretty good rain, had a lot of lightning strikes, but they have been sort of fizzling on out. But as you can see, this is continuing to work its way in toward Bear County, moving right over Medina Lake. That's always good news. So right around Leon Springs, Lotus, you want to watch out. These showers are going to be working their way in here in just a matter of a, a couple of uh, minutes. And then right behind that, there's another, well, small cell, maybe a lightning strike or two associated with that decent downpour. These things are moving along at 15, 20 miles per hour, so not at a really, really fast clip. So you may see some hefty downpours, and that was the situation with about uh, two, two and a half inches of rain estimated in northwestern Bear in northwestern Kerr County earlier this morning. And then this next cluster out there, which again, these are showing signs of starting to die down just a little bit. We also have an ozone action day in effect for the metropolitan area going up in toward Austin. Temperatures, upper 60s, and that little bit of uh, some rain in the hill country this morning. Then we get the break in the action. 84 at noon. Then we'll start to see a couple of more scattered showers and storms later on today. About like what we had yesterday. There wasn't a whole lot out there. It just happened to be right on downtown. So a lot of people did get some rain, but uh, aerial coverage was not that great. Other than that, we are going to be up to 90. And uh, Ain't seen nothing yet as far as temperatures because it's going to be getting hot and hotter and hotter on top of that. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve, I saw some flashing lights. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, we do have our first problem of the morning, Mike. Yeah, roads are dry here in town from what we're looking at, but 410 at Fredericksburg, you want to watch out because we do see flashing lights out there. Never a good sign. This is actually along the Axis Road eastbound lanes. I spoke to our friends at Transguide a few minutes ago, and you could see that it's not causing an issue with the traffic out in the area, but still keep your focus out on the roadway because we do have folks commuting through the area. There it is right 
right on our map. You can see that it's not causing an impact in those eastbound lanes, but it's an area I'll keep a close eye on, especially as the commute does get rolling this morning. Be on the lookout for that, and let's hope everyone else is doing okay. Giving you a wide look at our metropolitan area, there things are looking fine for now, but uh, things are always subject to change as the morning commute does get moving. You can see that if you're traveling up into San Antonio, you shouldn't have any troubles, especially traveling in from any of these communities. The journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should be about 25 minutes at this hour. Not too bad if you're traveling in from Boulevardy along 281 southbound with 27 minutes on our clock. And we have 27 minutes right now on 35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. But let's get in one last look here at 410 at Fredericksburg. Remember, this is along the Axis Road, so not impacting the main lanes, but I'll keep a close eye on it. And let's hope for a better update a little bit later on in the newscast. Max Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say what started out as a noisy neighbor dispute has ended with the sound of gunfire. It left a woman in the hospital and two people on the run. Katrina Weber is live downtown with that story. Katrina, have police figured out why things got so out of hand? Well, from what they tell us, it started out with a, a, a noisy complaint. A woman who was complaining about her neighbors making too much noise in the middle of the night. And police say from there, things just elevated to the point of a shooting. Now, this happened around 2 o'clock this morning. That's when police got the call anyway. Uh, they got to those apartments, which are near Loop 1604 and I-10 on the far northeast side. Police say that they found a woman in her 30s suffering from a gunshot wound in her chest. They found out that she had gone to her neighbors upstairs to complain about noise and then police say there was a heated argument which spilled out into the parking lot. At some point they say a visitor to her upstairs neighbor is the one who shot her and then they say that suspect along with the neighbor took off. The police did search the area. They did not find the alleged shooter or the neighbor and so they are still looking for those people at this point. The woman who was shot has gone to a hospital. Police say she was critical but but stable after being shot in her chest. And again, they're still looking for the two, uh, the, the suspect accused of shooting that woman. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Virginia authorities say two men are dead after gunfire erupting just outside a high school graduation ceremony last night in Richmond, Virginia. This incident, along with others, comes after new research which says gun violence in the U.S. has reached new highs. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the report also says guns are the leading cause of death for children and teenagers in the U.S. A candlelight vigil in Saratoga County, New York for Kaylin Gillis, a 20-year-old fatally shot in April after her friend turned into the wrong driveway. The 20-year-old Gillis is among the more than 18,000 people who have died from gun violence so far this year, according to the Gun Violence Archive. And so is Ajika A.J. Owens, the 35-year-old mother of four from Florida, who was fatally shot last week after an argument with a neighbor escalated. My grandchildren's mother was shot and killed with her nine-year-old son standing next to her. She had no weapon. She posed no imminent threat to anyone. Samuel Schwartz, who lost his cousin in the 2018 Parkland School shooting, is holding a multi-day sit-in at the U.S. Capitol. After every shooting, we hear on Twitter that, that lawmakers and, 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 and uh, citizens call for action, but, but there's no action taken. So uh, that's why uh, I decided to lead this, and that's why all these people are here with me. We are here to, to make sure that something happens. A new report from the Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Violence Solutions says gun violence in the U.S. hit a record high in 2021 with nearly 49,000 gun deaths with increases in both gun-related homicides and suicides. We are hoping that Leader Schumer listens to us and puts the assault weapons ban on the Senate floor for a vote immediately. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Federal prosecutors using a second grand jury in the investigation into former President Donald Trump's handling of those classified documents. A grand jury based in Southern Florida hearing testimony from multiple witnesses in recent weeks. Another witness expected to appear today at the federal courthouse in Miami with at least one additional witness after that. A new study suggests putting more electric vehicles on the road could save thousands of lives over the next few decades. The American Lung Association released a new report that says if gas vehicles were replaced by electric vehicles by 2035, over 89,000 fewer premature deaths would occur in the U.S. by 2050. 
that the nation switch, switch to a cleaner power supply and cleaner vehicles. The report suggests that the country as a whole would net $978 billion in public health benefits. All right, time now just about 540, 69 degrees. Just ahead, an important warning for new parents regarding the use of infant pillows. It's already been recalled, but still being used by many. And are you ready for olive oil coffee mm. here in Texas? Doesn't sound good. I'm just, I, you know what? I would try it <laughs> sure. just to try it. I don't want to pay for it because I assume it's egregiously priced. We're going to tell you where you're going to have to travel here in the Lone Star State to try the new olive oil infused drinks. It's interesting. It's something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and looking out there with live cam, the kind of morning you may want cold coffee or iced coffee instead of hot coffee. 59 degrees. We'll be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect the rest of the week. We'll be right back. In your morning consumer headlines, a popular pillow for babies being recalled in an update on a UPS strike. That's right. Plus, the Starbucks olive oil coffee comes to Texas. We're going to have the latest consumer news. And we will start with, I guess we will start with the Safety Commission. Right. Yes. Right. So the Consumer Product Safety Commission is urging people to stop using an infant pillow that has been linked to at least 10 baby deaths. So Boppy Newborn Loungers originally recalled in September of 2021 after eight infants died. Now the problem is babies can suffocate in certain positions on the pillow. They can roll off of it and face other dangerous surfaces. A lot of people continue to use the product. It has since resulted in two more deaths since the recall. Officials say the used Bobby lounges also appear on sale on sites like Facebook Marketplace. They point out that is illegal to resell it and anyone who owns a product should stop using it immediately. And the clock is ticking down on what could be a major strike that has the potential to affect millions of American households. Workers with the United Parcel Service will vote this week to authorize a strike if their union does not reach a new contract by August 1st. If employees walk, it would be the largest work stoppage in U.S. history. But both sides are bargaining over pay increases, benefits, and better working conditions. All right, here we go. Story of the morning. Starbucks locations, more of them at least, will have the new, I don't want to say controversial, I'll say interesting, olive oil infused coffee drinks. But here in Texas, here in San Antonio, you're going to have to take a drive to get one. Now, customers can buy the so called oleato. Sure. I think it's Italian. <laughs> drinks at more Starbucks locations, including. Buda, yeah. just south of Austin. That's, right, close so to, that's close to us. Yeah, it's not too far a drive. Yeah. I wouldn't, you know, I can just throw some olive oil on a coffee and call it a day. <laughs> and Dallas. Now, previously, the drinks were only available in California, Illinois, New York, and Washington. The product launched in March. I'm pretty sure we talked about it right as it launched. And to be honest, there's somewhat, somewhat negative reviews. The combination of olive oil and coffee reportedly causing digestion problems for some people. The Aliato menu offers an oat milk latte, a Toffee nut, I've never even heard that. Me neither. A toffee nut iced shaken espresso, each with a spoonful of olive oil, plus a cold brew with olive oil infused cold foam. There are so many options and combinations that you can throw in there, but I'm just a black coffee guy. Yeah, same, for the most part, unless, yeah. like, unless it's like a treat day. Yeah, okay, treat, that's fair. <laughs> throw some whipped cream, some cinnamon, you're good to go. Right. All right, time now. This is about 546, 69 degrees. And our friends in the Animal Defense League are standing by with this precious little pet that needs a new home. We'll talk about being snug as a bug in a rug right here. Nadia is here from the Animal Defense League. Okay, now you're you're getting shy. Camera shy. Hiding. Yep. Who's this little baby? So this is Pepper, and she's about uh, eight weeks, and she's a domestic short hair, and she's looking for her forever home. And she is, <laughs> aside from just being all cuddled in there, she is all kitten and ready to just rock and roll. So beautiful too. Little bit. She's got white paws there, but basically, I mean, nothing prettier than a black cat with those green eyes. I don't know if you can. See See him right there. So, mm -hmm. And you have a huge event coming up. Doesn't involve kittens, but puppies this weekend, right? Yes, dogs only. It's our mic a mega microchip and vaccination clinic um, in partnership with San Antonio Animal Care Services and our friends, San Antonio Humane Society will be there. Um, we'll be giving um, 
DHPP, rabies, and microchips. Okay, but all the, the necessary ones that you have to have every year for your pet. Mm -hmm. And it is free to San Antonio residents? Res San Antonio residents only up to three pets per household, and it's going to be at Camargo Park. And again, three dogs. Three dogs. Not cats. And of course, you do have to bring proof of residency, a uh, driver's license, and CPS, CPS bill, bill, something mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, it's a great opportunity um, because that can save you a whole, whole bunch of money. Yes. And again, they got to be vaccinated, got to be micro. Oh, are you going to? Snuggle in there? Yeah, she's okay. ready for a nap. <laughs> well, this little one is, of course, up for adoption, mm -hmm. and you can head on over there to 1130 Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. PetSmart on Four Winds or ADLTexas.org. Thank mm -hmm. you, dear. All right. Flashing lights, yeah, still out here at 410 at Fredericksburg. We are taking a look there at Train Sky. Now, this is along the Axis Road. We've had our eyes on it for throughout the last 20 minutes or so. It uh, doesn't appear to be causing an impact with the main lanes. In fact, it doesn't really even seem to be causing any issues for drivers at all. We'll get that icon back on our map. But remember, this is along the Axis Road as you approach I-10, so not too far from Crossroads. Thankfully, as we give you a wide look at the map as we enter our 6 a.m. hour, we are not seeing any other issues, just a lot of that scattered construction. But let's hope for a better update as we get closer to that morning rush hour 410 at Fredericksburg Road. Just make sure you keep your eyes out on that. Our friends at Trans Guy giving us a wide view. Micah, it looks like we have a lot of folks out there, but from what we're looking at, a lot of dry roads out here at 410. That's uh, changing, yeah, in that location, but that is changing in some spots, particularly over here on the, uh, the northwest side. We've got the showers that continue to work their way on in here. So right there around San Geronimo, Lotus, you're just about seeing some of these showers maybe working their way in toward the western part of Leon Springs. So if you're going out 16 in toward Bandera, you are going to run into some of this rain. And then now this other spot right there around Rio Medina has just cropped up. I mean, again, as this loops through, nothing and then that has now developed moving down to the uh, southeast at uh roughly 15 miles per hour. These haven't been moving all that quickly. So at that pace and as this continues down to the uh, southeast, that will be brushing by Castroville and then continuing down. Well, let me try this again here. Excuse me on that one. And again, working its way down to the uh, southeast at uh, about 15 miles per hour. And that's going to get us into the cost right around 634. Castroville at 612. So just within the next uh, 15 minutes or so, it's going to be working its way in toward Castroville. Now, further out to the uh, northwest, we do have some of these uh, showers and storms that are continuing to develop out here. And even though they are popping up, they really haven't, they've been trying to grow a little bit and then sort of fizzle their way out. And that's uh, been the situation there. You can see that one was trying to develop, but it does appear to be sort of, like I said, fizzling on out. So we'll just keep an eye on some of these showers here and they're working their way in toward uh, 1604 as of right now. Yesterday, boy, beautiful evening once some of those uh, showers went through the area. Good looking sunrise this morning, a couple of a high wispy clouds out there. We'll have a couple of stray showers today. Then what we have to watch out for, and this model is the one that's really picking this up, a cluster of storms to try and develop out there to the west. Now, not everything's in agreement on this, but again, we've got to watch out for that with some of these, this northwesterly flow. That's going to potentially produce a couple of strong to severe storms. Then tomorrow, we're going to have to watch out for the same thing. And most of the area tomorrow right now from Storm Prediction Center is under the threat of an isolated strong to potentially severe storm. That would be tomorrow with some of those uh, clusters developing out there in northwest portions of the hill country. 90 today, 91 tomorrow. Stray shower, thunderstorm here and there. After that, hot through the weekend and hotter next week. We'll be back. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, I'm in North Georgia and smoke and haze from wildfires in Canada has made it more than a thousand miles to impact tens of millions of Americans, some with some of the worst air quality in the world at this moment. We'll tell you how long it's gonna last, why the pattern is stuck, and then Dr. Ashton is gonna join us with what it means for your health. And then I'm gonna show you how parents can save big on thrifting for kids. Secondhand clothes for kids, it's not new, but it has become incredibly popular. And there's some really great stores and some great tips tips from an expert thrifter that I'm going to bring you. That and so much more on GMA. All right, summer school just got a bit easier for commuters via transit, offering free rides to select colleges and universities throughout the summer. It includes all of the Alamo Colleges, Our Lady of the Lake, Incarnate Word, Texas a and San Antonio, and UTSA. For more information, how you can take part, just head to KSAT.com.
Time now, 557, 69 degrees, still a lot to come here on GMSA. In our next hour, state lawmakers going back to work for this special session, how your property taxes could be affected. Plus, an attack that led to a deadly shooting this weekend, raising a lot of questions about the man who was killed. Why the family of the woman who was killed by him says he never should have been released from jail. And up next, the controversial merger between the PGA Tour and Saudi Arabian funded Live Golf. Why the PGA commissioner now being roasted by players and fans. And of course, we're going to be checking in with Mike Ostrich for your weather and Stephen Cavazos for anything that pops up on the roadways before you head out the door. We'll be right back.